what would happen if you went back in time and killed your own grandfather? Or in an alternative past, met your young mom and became your own father? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But what if we say that not just well-known scientists, but even Nobel laureates are scratching their heads over such paradoxes? What for? Is time travel impossible? Not everything is clear, which makes the paradoxes even more interesting. Today, we'll talk about the most mind-blowing time travel paradoxes. The Paradoxes of Time Travel. The Grandpa Paradox Let's start with the famous Grandfather Paradox. By the way, this is the real term, and it's also called the Murdered Grandfather Paradox. But we'll omit the murdering part for the sake of being family-friendly. Imagine that you are the grandson of a man who stood at the origins of an entire dynasty, which eventually caused the deaths of millions of people, or even destroyed the world. Having received a unique opportunity to use the time machine, you go into the past with one goal, to do anything to prevent your grandparents from meeting and passing their genes to the next generations. You rightfully think that in this way, you will eliminate the entire family line and the world will become a better place. The reason for the paradox is obvious. In this case, you won't be born but you have already been born because here you are, flesh, bones, and everything. Both regular daydreamers and great thinkers have tried to solve this paradox. It basically boils down to the fact that every time you try to change the course of history, there will always be something that gets in your way, or history will follow the same path anyway with only slight variations. So, for example, scientists describe one of the grandfather paradox scenarios. Say if you could go back in time and do something with Hitler when he was still young, then the atrocious Second World War would not have happened. This assumption is countered by many by the fact that instead of Hitler, there would be another dictator who would bring no less terrible things. Although the grandfather paradox is the most famous one, it is only a small piece in a great tapestry of paradoxes, which are called the time travel paradoxes. And now you'll get to know what they are. The predestination paradox. This is a spin on the grandfather paradox, but it's even more interesting. A paradox occurs when the time traveler's actions become part of past events and eventually lead to the event he is trying to prevent. This leads to a temporal cycle of casualty in which event one in the past influences event two in the future. Time travel to the past, which in turn triggers event one. This creates a cycle of events that makes it impossible for the time traveler to change history. And any attempts to prevent something in the past will simply result in causing the event instead of preempting it. This paradox suggests that things are destined to happen because they have already happened once, and no matter what happens, the outcome will always be the same. Does it sound confusing? Let me give you an example. Imagine that your friend dies in a car accident and you return to that terrible day to save him from an unfortunate fate. You hurry to the car accident site only to realize that you knocked down some passerby by accident. You are horrified to discover that it was in fact your friend. And you are that very same absent-minded driver. Your very attempt to change the past leads to the predestination paradox. The scenario of events that you have experienced is already built into the general vision of reality. And by trying to change the past, 
you will only complete your role in bringing about some event in history without changing it. This paradox implies not only your immediate role, for example, the role of that driver. Predestination arises from the very fact of you traveling into the past. This is clearly shown in the 2002 film Time Machine. Guy Pierce's character, Dr. Alexander Hartigan, witnesses his fiancée being killed by a robber. This tragic episode prompts him to construct a time machine in order to go back to the past and save her from death. However, the subsequent attempts to fix things led the doctor to the sad conclusion, I could come back a thousand times and see her die a thousand ways. Having then traveled many centuries into the future to find out if this problem would be solved, Hartigan heard these words from a mystical being. You built your time machine because of Emma's death. If she had lived, it would never have existed. So how could you use your machine to go back and save her? You are the inescapable result of your tragedy. The Bootstrap Paradox the previous paradoxes illustrate the unalterability of past events. Now, we'll explain a similar scenario, but with feedback, the so-called bootstrap paradox. This is a paradox where an object, a person, an inanimate object or information that was sent back in time creates an endless loop. In this cycle, the given object doesn't have a clear, traceable origin it's not clear where it came from in the first place. This is because altered past events begin to affect the object in the initial time. Thus, its origins seem to blur between these two moments in history. Imagine that you are a 20-year-old time traveler. You travel 21 years back in time, meet a girl, and start a passionate affair. After a couple of months, you return to your time, not suspecting that you got the girl pregnant. Her child in her time grows up to become a 20-year-old time traveler who goes back 21 years, and so on. The paradox repeatedly pops up in literature and cinema. In 1959, American science fiction writer Robert Heinlein wrote his classic short story, you are all zombies on this subject. And thanks to the Terminator, two generations have known this paradox. This incident is also known as the ontological paradox because ontology is a branch of philosophy that studies the nature of being and existence. Such ontological paradoxes imply that the future, present, and past aren't set in stone. And this poses a difficult problem for scientists how to reliably establish the origin of something if there is a chance that it will get to us from the future. And there really is such a possibility since Einstein's equations deem closed time loops possible. The physicist and Nobel laureate Kip Thorne became the first scientist to prove that the so-called wormholes, that is, portals to the past, can be theoretically created under certain conditions. Once again, time travel does not violate the laws of physics. So, the time traveler paradoxes require a solution. And this need becomes especially evident when such paradoxes meet experimental physics. The Polchinski's Paradox Joseph Polchinski, an American theoretical physicist, proposed a time paradox scenario in which a billiard ball is fired into a curved wormhole. Let us remind you that a wormhole is viewed by theoretical physicists as a conceptual structure that connects two separate points in space-time. A curved wormhole in the Polchinski's paradox serves as a kind of time portal. The entry and exit points are located very closely from each other, but are separated by time. And so, the ball flies out from the other side of the wormhole in the past just in time to hit its younger version, repel it, and thereby prevent it from entering the portal. 
The Polchinski's paradox is an elegant and simple generalization of the time travel issues at the macroscopic level. He smartly bypasses the issues of free will, grandfathers, little Hitlers, quantum superposition, and a host of other problems that only prevent theoretical scientists from understanding these puzzling things. The idea is based on the laws of motion, doesn't refer to shaky speculations, and therefore represents the best way to study time paradoxes. The question is, how will it work? And will it work at all? And if not, why not if it should? This paradox was taken seriously by very respectable physicists. For example, Kip Thorne is a well-known scientist who has discussed it in detail in his book, Black Holes and Time Distortions. Thorne and other colleagues analyzed different scenarios of this experiment. He couldn't do without quantum physics, for how to proceed without it. So scientists have come to the conclusion that although Polchinski's speculative installation may yield different results each time, the chance of a non-paradoxical result is quite high. That is, it's likely that each time the ball will fly out of the wormhole in a way that doesn't prevent its earlier version from getting into the wormhole in the first place. And now, let's go back to the grandfather's paradox that was mentioned early on in this video. Remember we said that something always prevents us from dramatically changing the course of events? Turns out, speculative conclusions are very similar to the findings of respectable physicists after all. Of course, we don't claim that everything is predetermined. We're just trying to be on the same page with Kip Thorne to unravel these mind-boggling puzzles.